Hello, and welcome to the webinar, The Benefits of IT and Tax Department Collaboration, Cooperation, and Partnership. My name is Eric Wallace with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. I have a few administrative details to share with you, then we'll dig into our discussion. First, we would like to thank Vertex for their partnership with today's event. They've been wonderful thought leadership partners to Argyle, and they're committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience. Thank you again to Vertex. We appreciate you joining us today. We welcome you to stay socially connected during today's event. For those of you who are on social media, you can follow us at Argyle Exec Forum and please hashtag us at Argyle Digital. I also wanted to take a moment to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we've curated based on the feedback we've received over the years from our members. Argyle is very proud and protective of this policy as it reflects our commitment to ensure the neutrality and overall value of the content presented at our events. We've worked closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints during the session today, and we appreciate our member support of this policy. For those of you who are seeking CPE credit today, you must answer at least three polling questions and remain on the session for its duration. Polls can be found under the polls tab on the right-hand side of your console, right next to chat. Afterwards, if you're eligible to receive credit, you'll receive an email with a link to your certificates. If you have any questions about CPE credit, please email cpe at argyleforum.com. Finally, and most importantly, please submit all questions that come up during today's event into the chat section of the interface. Before we start, we'll have our speakers introduce themselves, and then we'll begin our discussion. Kieran, over to you. Thanks, Eric. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Kieran Seshigiri, and I am the practice leader in the SAP consulting practice at Vertex. Jana? Yeah, my name is Jana Zeeb. I'm the global client leader in the solutions practice for SAP. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> my name is Harold Birchfield. I'm a lead consultant in the SAP practice at Vertex. Uh, 16 years with Vertex, all that time in field consulting, uh, working on a variety of projects. Happy to be with you today. Thank you, Hal and Jana. Today, we will be talking about the benefits of the IT and tax department and how collaboration, cooperation, and partnership is key to the success of a project. An overview of today's presentation, um, many of Today's multinational businesses are transforming their business operations to increase visibility and overall efficiency. Investments in technology, mostly led by the IT team, are one component of this transformation. And one of the major investments is the evolution to SAP S4 HANA from ECC or from a greenfield approach. IT teams are responsible for meeting tight budgets and timetables but establishing a collaborative relationship with the tax team is a critical component to the success of this migration. You will also learn the following, how IT and tax departments can create a joint business case for including a tax engine in your business transformation, how to eliminate tax customizations across your ERP instances, and how your IT team can help increase the accuracy of your tax processes. One of the many challenges of going through this implementation is the corporate challenges. Um, with moving to S4 HANA, there's a lot of, of new technical enhancements that you need to be aware of. Um, IT typically manages the project and like we mentioned before, has tight timeframes and very strict budgets. So Jana, one of the questions, is it critical to have tax work with IT from day one? Definitely. Um, with any project, it's important to understand the systems and processes impacted by the change. Um, from an ECC to S4 upgrade, it's critical to have the IT work with IT team, work with the tax team to understand on the IT side, right? How are taxes handled in ECC today? They need to understand the tax side. How are taxes collected on sales to customers? How are taxes calculated, um, paid to vendors on purchases? Um, and they certainly don't want to break anything that's working in their ECC system with the upgrade, right? right? And on the tax side, tax need to understand what changes may impact the existing processes. So they definitely need to work together. Um, by, 
tax and IT partnering at the beginning of the project. Um, this assures that IT is aware of the scope and, and the processes that it touches uh, throughout the life cycle of the project. Perfect. Thank you. So the, the summary of that is tax really needs to convince IT that there's a need for a taxing engine, a third party taxing engine or something outside of SAP. This brings us to our first polling question. Do you have a third party tax engine today? We'll give it a minute or so for people to respond. Looks like we're almost 50 50. All right. So, so based on that, it looks to be that 51% um, do not have a third party tax engine in their ERP system today. So, Jana, um, when we talk about having a, a third party tax engine, why is there a need in the US? to have a, a third party or a taxing engine in your ERP? Okay, um, indirect tax is complicated, as we know, um, and touches many SAP processes from order to cash transactions for, to procure to pay and intercompany. So it has fingers that kind of touch every aspect of, of transactions in SAP. On the procure to pay side, it estimates tax on the purchase order and differentiates between direct and indirect purchases. Um, which is critical. You don't want to over uh, uh, calculate tax or overpay tax to the vendor. Um, and then it also understands where and how the item is used with the third party tax uh, engine. Um, and then tax paid to vendor, it validates and compares what the vendor charge and what Vertex calculates to make sure that we understand um, that we're paying the right amount of tax. We're not overpaying tax to the vendor. And on the order to cash side, the tax engine estimates tax on our sales orders and determine customer exemptions and product taxability um, of where the tax is due. So it really um, it, it really enhances the tax calculation. It takes all the manual thinking and research out of that process. Um, if tax is not charged to the customer correctly um, the, or paid to the vendor correctly, it may result in fines and penalties under audit. Um, and then the uh, tax engine um, ensures that all rates and rules are um, for all jurisdictions, right? And for, we're talking U.S. taxes um, are updated on a monthly basis um, to ensure compliance with the latest tax regulations. And that's Vertex's monthly um, update that comes out. Um, it's also uh, a great place to store customer exemption certificates. So when you do get audited, you have all of the print PDFs attached in Vertex and you can support your audits. Um, Perfect. So, yeah. Okay. Hal, um, what are some of the challenges of not having a tax engine um, for your U.S. operations? Uh, for the U.S., there are, there are many challenges, uh, and I split it out into three groups, IT, the tax department, and end users. Uh, for IT, it's a complicated, so if you're not using the tax engine, you're using or trying to use native SAP, the tax requirements not going away. Um, so using a, a native, SA, um, native SAP is going to be an initial, uh, very complicated initial setup for the IT group. Uh, and those resources, if you're on a project, uh, could be better used elsewhere. Um, and then once uh, you're live, it's the upkeep of the rates and rules that the IT, I'd say in uh, cooperation with the tax department, has to uh, handle. Uh, there are 13,000 or thereabouts U.S. taxing jurisdictions. Uh, if you're using a tax engine, this is uh, taken care of for you. Uh, for the tax department, uh, challenges would be meeting some of the requirements. Native SAP doesn't handle exemption certificate processing very well. So you really would want to use a tax engine for that. Um, there's also limited reporting and filing capability using native SAP. So as one thing to understand is that Vertex and other tax engines are both calculation engines and reporting systems. So you're, you're able to get your reports 
specific for tax directly out of uh, the tax engine. Uh, and then finally, for end users, it's going to be a harder system to use. Uh, it's going to be error prone. They're going to be making tax decisions. Uh, and as Jana mentioned, uh, these errors could result in customer satisfaction problems and potential fines and penalties. Perfect. Thank you, Hal. Um, so one of the things that we've seen in our consulting projects is the perception um, of risk involved by adding a, a third party connection, whether it's a third party tax engine or a data warehouse or any other third party software, there's the risk by IT that this will delay their project, that it'll extend um, their deadlines and, and not meet their directives that they have set in place. So I know in a little bit, we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of adding a tax system um, but we would like to have another polling question on what is the relationship like between the finance group and the IT group at your company? Is it close and, and very, you know, working together, very collaborative? Is it an arm's length? Is there open conflict and you guys struggle to um, resolve anything um, or do you not now? So take a minute and we will go through this question. Perfect. Well, it it seems like for for the majority of um, people on the webinar, you have a, a close and mutual relationship with your IT group. Um, I think we've all, you know, between Jana, Hal, and I, I think we've all had situations where it has been, you know, very collaborative and everybody's working as a as a collective team. Then we had other situations where it is kind of open conflict that, you know, IT wants to um, designate, you know, the path forward, what needs to happen. They won't, they don't want to budge from their timelines. And it, it makes it hard from, from our perspective as a consulting group to come in and kind of bridge that gap between the, the tax department or the finance group and the IT area. So it's, it's good to see that 57% um, really have a, a close and a, a good collaborative working um, relationship between finance and IT. Now we'll switch our focus to more of the IT specific challenges. So like we mentioned before, um, there's the perception that by bringing in a tax engine, a third party system, that it involves unnecessary risks into your ERP implementation, that it could cause delays or uh, resources not available or additional testing. So Hal, kind of, is this an accurate perception? What have you seen um, kind of in your consulting engagements? Um, it, it adds uh, complexities, I'll uh, state that. Uh, for example, duplication of uh, customer data. We, we have to maintain that obviously in SAP and also in the tax engine if, that, if we're doing exemption certificate handling there. Uh, but it's less risk. You've got to measure the risk. It's overall, it's going to be less risk using the engine versus uh, attempting to use native SAP for the US. Um, we and other vendors use SAP's external tax interface. This has been around since the mid 90s. I was involved back then when I worked for SAP. Uh, it's changed uh, very little over the years. Uh, and this is what S4 HANA for US and Canada is going to be, is, is using. So it's uh, a standard uh, interface, standard uh, offering from SAP, and then supported by SAP. So it's, it's uh, in terms of risk, it's, you've got a um, solution that's supported by the vendor. Um, there are other components to the solution, including middleware, which we provide. And again, that's gonna be uh, supported software. 
And this uh, interface is SAP certified. So you also have that to, um, to um, I would say, minimize the risk. Um, we have supplementary software, which I'm not going to get into, but that's also a supported solution by us. And then finally, it's a solution that's been in place for almost 30 years now and thousands of customers using it. So it's a very uh, tried and trusted uh, solution. Okay, Jana, do you have- I'd like to add to that too. So um, I don't think it brings risk. I think with introducing a tax engine into your ERP implementation, uh, since tax touches everything, this is a great time. So if you're doing an ECC to S4 upgrade, it's a great time to take a step back, do the ROI on your um, tax engine. Can we justify it? Because the breadth and scope of the testing that will be done during this upgrade is, is critical. Um, and you, if you're going to do it all, do it one big bang and get it all done so everyone understands um, the new processes. And that's a perfect time to um, either upgrade your existing uh, tax software or implement a new one. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate that, what Jana just said, um, the testing. You know, if you're moving to S4 and you're not including the a tax engine, but then in the following years or subsequent months after go live, then you incorporate a third party uh, tax engine, you're, you're basically duplicating efforts. You know, there's there's additional cost because all the testing you've done on just your S4 migration, you're going to have to redo once you incorporate a third party tax engine. So, you know, when we've seen clients and customers kind of look at this approach, we steer them away from that because, as, as Jana mentioned, you're having to test every transaction or, or a lot of transactions with depth, whether it's the AP side or the AR side, it's better to do it all at once by incorporating a, a tax engine and your S4 migration versus doing it piecemeal one at a time. Um, I think your, your resources would appreciate it better if you're testing everything because you have a, a full-fledged solution as opposed to piecemealing it and, and only having half of a solution with the S4 migration and then incorporating a, a tax engine later on. So definitely, you know, out of this, you need to make sure you focus on what's the end state. If you just have a S4 migration, will you in the tax department or the finance area be able to perform your everyday tasks? or will you be hindered because you don't have a tax engine, you have to do everything manually until you um, incorporate a third party. So I, I, I definitely wanna stress that that's key. And, and especially for the larger companies, when you go through these migrations or, or implementations, it's a lot of cost and a lot of effort. Um, so if you're breaking it up into two um, implementations, it's almost double the cost you know, versus doing it all at once. Yes, it, it may take another couple weeks um, longer than anticipated. It may not, just depending on when you start this in the process. But at least, you know, you're only paying those testing resources once or the if you have your own testing group, you're only using them once for these, you know, next year or so of, of implementation and then they can do their, their normal business. You know, I think for the folks that have a, um, a tax engine right now, maybe it's the time to upgrade it, right? So over the years, um, we've done uh, enhancements along the way in SAP proper to help with the tax functions. Um, and now we've got SAP Accelerator, which is a suite of software that resides in SAP. So it helps us account for the tax. It helps us report the tax. Um, it has key monitoring tools that would help basis. Um, it has reconciliation tools to help finance and the tax department reconcile from Vertex reporting to general ledger to the inside SAP report. So there's um, also additional tools that we have now for testing and customer copying and whatnot that really could add value um, to, to the project. So maybe not a full-blown implementation, but just look at our, your upgrade opportunities also. Perfect. Thank you. Um, next, we have another polling question. 
how extensive are your tax customizations across your ERP instance or instances, depending on the case? Oh, at the beginning, the very extensive was taking the lead, but now the not very expensive is is coming around the corner. So um, give it another little bit. Okay, it, it seems for most uh, customers, um, there's a good amount of tax customizations, but not extensive. Um, I think one of the, the positives for, if, if these same people do not have a, a tax engine is streamlining those. And we'll, we'll get into that um, here in a little bit. Um, going back to the IT challenges, um, does the IT group have the knowledge and skill set to implement tax systems or requirements or these tax customizations? Um, I think that's critical. Um, is do, are they um, sophisticated enough to know what tax wants and, and how I'll kind of start with you. Uh, well, certainly from a technical point of view, I don't think there's anything difficult or, or special with uh, our systems and setting them up and making them part of the uh, IT infrastructure. Um, from a requirements um, point of view, that's obviously got to come from the business and the tax department. Uh, I'd say unlike, I mean, like any other business requirement that IT has to um, understand and, and meet. Um, I think uh, this whole process works more smoothly if um, the tax department gets as knowledgeable as possible with the tax engine, um, not so much on a technical, from a technical point of view, but how the configuration is handled and, and make them responsible for it and keeping up with the updates and that that type of thing. So um, again, I think it works better and best when the tax department takes a, a leading role in the uh, the use and setup of the tax engine. Perfect. In my experience too, I think um, IT tends to want to know or think that they know tax when um, you know it changes all the time um, but I think tax needs to lead the functional side with doing the documentation requirements and the functional functional solution documents so then the technical team I team whether that's the configuration team or the developers can follow behind with their technical solution documents so it's really key that you you, you really have tax drive those requirements as, as they know in the nuances with with taxes in every jurisdiction yeah and i, I think that's fundamental um we've had situations or, or projects where it has tried to lead it from um, beginning to end for for all requirements and it's it comes back towards the end towards qa testing once the tax group or the finance group gets involved that they're missing, you know, 50% of their requirements because the IT group never asked tax what they wanted. Um, they just said, let's let's move everything as is, you know, make no changes, and we'll we'll live on. Um, so this is paramount to the conversation that you know the tax finance group and the IT group really need to collaborate together and make sure that you know. If, if we're lacking something in the old system and we're moving to a new system, what can we fix? You know, how can we make it a better system go forward and kind of remove all the angst or all the pains that you have in your current system? So it's, it's critical um, that the tax group, finance group work with um, your IT leads to make sure you have a voice, that you have a, a seat at the table to get everything that you need. Um, uh, if we expand past, um, you know, just the domestic U.S. jurisdictions, you know, tax and legal um, need to work together on making sure all the, the country-specific requirements, legal requirements in each uh, various country 
is met and that the new ERP um, can also handle those requirements. So it's very collaborative to make sure that IT is not fully driving the train, but you have input from the various groups, whether it be accounting, tax, legal, regulatory, et cetera. I think that's, that's very key in these implementations. I just I have to have a comment on that. I think um, you mentioned other countries. So uh, if this process is not working smoothly, it could impede the growth of your business. If you want to expand into other countries, but uh, you, know, you just can't you can't handle it from a tax point of view, that's going to really uh, slow things down. So it's got strategic uh, benefits as well. Um, getting tax and IT working together and, and being able to roll out solutions easily. And, and to that, Hal, you know, Jana and Hal, throughout your work, your consulting engagements, have you seen where, you know, taxes over here on the side, trying to get their requirements known, trying to get the IT group um, to respond, but IT is kind of standing still and saying, no, that can be, you know, if, if it's not in the main implementation, it can be released, you know, two, three, five, six down the road. Have you seen that a lot in your engagements? I've, I've seen a lot of um, uh, sort of different, different worlds. I mean, the, often the tax department wants nothing to do with SAP and the SAP uh, team is knows little about tax, so it's it's bridging that divide. Um, I've seen that certainly. Okay, Jana. Yeah, I normally um, I think with the smaller clients, I do see that. Um, with the larger organizations, they normally um, have been automated a lot longer, in my experience, and they've got the the resources with the functional tax, the technical tax, and then the IT department that all work together. Um, so I I don't see that as much as I used to. Perfect. And and one other thing to note is in regards to timelines. You know, if you know, we mentioned above how um, having a, a third party tax system doesn't necessarily increase risk. Um, but from a timeline perspective, you know, incorporating a tax engine, having a, a kind of a final solution where you don't have to do it piecemeal um, is critical. And if that means delaying the project, you know, a couple of weeks, a month, whatever, it's, I think it's invaluable to have a, a full solution implemented altogether as opposed to saying, okay, because we're going to um, delay our, our S4 implementation by three weeks, we're going to scrap the third party uh, tax engine and, and put it later on um, in a second release or, or whatever. Um, I think it's critical for the tax or finance group to really have a, be very vocal um, through leadership to say, this is you know, this is part of our business, this, you know, if we do not have a third party tax engine or a tax engine altogether, this will inhibit us from um, processing transactions, from purchasing items or selling items, depending on your business. So it's critical that, you know, from a, a finance and tax leadership that you really come to the table and, and push um, why it's critical to have a, a kind of one solution as opposed to an S4 migration and then the um, a tax solution later on. Okay. So now um, going to the, the third party tax engines. Jana, why is it important to use a third party tax engine? Yeah, so there's a lot of benefits with using um, a third party, specifically Vertex, right? <laughs> the benefits include um, you're ensuring control over the tax processes, right? These um, by automating and ensures the tax calculation is consistent, repeatable, and accurate, right? Um, it's one single solution for all your global tax needs. Um, 
uh, Vertex and Accelerator are scalable in or, and can support Canada, EMEA, LATAM, um, APAC, and India, Brazil, and Argentina, the more complex countries. Um, and you minimize your audit risk, right? So if your audit risk goes down, then also your um, your need for reserves go down. So the, from an accounting perspective, then you're looking at a reserve and then also it maximizes cash flow. So you're not making errors. Um, if you're overpaying the jurisdiction and then you get a, a customer certificate, then you have to go back to get your money back. That could trigger an audit. So you're keeping your um, checks and balances along the way. Um, and it's just a, the, a, the need to eliminate a manual process. The air is human. And if you've got manual people touching this transaction along the way, it just adds keystrokes. It adds time. And we're all about efficiency. Um, let's see. It enhances the customer experience. So if you're grabbing their certificates, you're entering them into Vertex, you're calculating the tax correctly, then the customer has a better experience. Instead of the customer getting charged tax, they have to short pay, then they have to get the certificate and then touch, touch, touch. Everyone's manually touching that transaction again. Um, and same with the vendor compliance, right? So if you can pay your vendors quickly, you're in compliance with their guidelines and you'll have a better, uh, happier vendor right um and then um i think that's it for the third party engine and and one thing as you're i know you joked about you know vertex basically is the only third party tax engine you should purchase um which i agree with um but as you're um looking at a at a tax engine whatever it may be you want to make sure that it's a kind of a, a one size fits all. Um, Jana mentioned, you know, having the the different areas, whether it's North America, EMEA, LATAM, um, et cetera. You want to make sure your your tax solution is robust enough to handle growth in your company. You know, whether you are currently just you know domestic U.S. Um, with no thoughts of of expanding to Canada, let's say there is the potential and you want to make sure the solution you choose can grow with your operations. Also kind of what I've seen at various clients on older or legacy systems where they had to have a, a tax engine for the procurement side, another tax engine for the sales side, um, another tax engine for, you know, a different set of, of, of countries. So what vertex does, is at least you have kind of that um, one size fits all, one stop shopping where uh, one tax engine, one solution kind of integrates to your sales or your procurement side globally. Um, I think that's key for any decision as you're um, working through uh, S4 migration is making sure that your tax solution can handle everything from purchases to sales. And I would say even further, right? So if you go into different countries, but even if you just change the way you do business, if you start selling more services, um, if you have a opening up a manufacturing plant in another country, or, you know, the different legs of your transactions or, you know, different eco terms, different, you know, how, you, however your business is changing, Vertex can change with you. Perfect. It could also be a different distribution channel, uh, mm -hmm. uh, e or uh, that kind of thing. So that that is we, we support all types of uh, distribution channels and inputs into um, the system. And, and one thing that you need to consider is as you're working through this this project or the implementation of an S4, what are your pain points? You know, what have you been struggling with manually, you know, from a tax department, whether it's use tax accruals, whether it's um, manual journal entries to fix write offs, you know, how can your next solution as you move towards S4, how can you automate that? What steps are needed in order to reduce the manual touch um, that you're doing today? Um, because as a as a tax leadership, you know, anything you can do to automate the processes to reduce, as Jana was saying, the, the kind of manual um, keystrokes, anything you can do to reduce that um, will save you money um, in the long term. 
So um, going to the next area, as you work through um, an implementation project, what should you be considering? What, what pieces are there to consider? Jana, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. So I think at first you need to develop a business case, right? What is our business case for a tax engine or upgrading a tax engine, et cetera, enhancing it? Um, so we've got increased efficiency that we've talked about, um, improved accuracy, right? Um, and improved accuracy for the accounting of the tax. So it's not only important, important as Hal said to calculate the tax, we also need to report on it. And then we need to account for it. Is it, is the, if we have a purchase, is it going to be expensed? Is it going to be recovered? Is it going to be accrued? So the accounting of the tax is critical along the way also. Um, like Kieran said, the agility for future changes. Um, it decreases IT involvement. A lot of these tools we have now actually pushes that onto the tax department so they can maintain more of their, their processes internally and not rely on IT. Um, and it, from a tax functional perspective, because we supply the rates and rules, they're just a decrease in the amount that the tax department has to research rules and regulations research, research um, tax rates, because tax rates change depending on how your transaction is structured. If you're shipping from one state to another, it's a seller's use tax rate. Within the same state, it's a sales tax rate. And if you're purchasing items where the, meat, the vendor didn't charge tax, it's a consumer's use tax. And that then expands once you get into Canada and the back countries. So what is the funding estimate for the project? Um, I guess understanding your budget early is critical, right? And not just the budget for the software, but is it the budget for any uh, virtual machines that you're gonna need, um, any middleware, anything that you're gonna need to make this whole setup um, work? And are there any tools that you wanna add? Like I said, Accelerator now has testing tools and accounts receivable uh, where you can do tax only credits um, easily to, and then actually tracks it back to the original document. So not only the original software, but any tools and any middleware and any virtual machines that you might need. Um, to, to add to that from a funding mm -hmm. estimate, you also need to look at your, your headcount. You know, with this project, you know, are you going to need additional resources, you know, whether contingent workers, you know, kind of consultants to help and, and handle the transition or your own people, you know, what is going to be dropped as your current staff is working through these implementations? Or is there more of a benefit to outsourcing some of this effort because your current staff is, is bogged down in day-to-day in -day operations? That definitely is key. Um, for the funding of the project um, and and how or different companies work through it, you know, a lot of times, you know, to to help the the tax people at least, this is an IT funded project. So when it comes to budgeting and stuff, the tax group or the finance group doesn't have to um, have the funds in their budget. It all comes from the the massive IT budget that every company has. So it's it's kind of a a, a win win at least for um, the tax groups. I know at least from clients that I've worked on and, and prior, um, it was always part of the IT cost. So get it in during this time, as opposed to carving it out specifically in your um, tax or, or finance budget. Um, one of the other questions is, you know, the priority, you know, does this take priority over another initiative, you know, if you're buying or selling a, a uh, area of your company or um, other projects you have, kind of where does this implementation stand um, as opposed to all the other um, work that needs to be done? And, and then that, of course, goes back to, you know, headcount and how many additional resources do you need to effectively implement um, this project? Um, other questions are, um, you know, who's going to champion this, you know, is it the, the CIO and the CFO championing it together? Um, if it is, 
you know, you need to make sure your voice is heard to your respective leadership, whether it's the CFO or CIO. Make sure they are aware of the pain points or what is needed in order to make this successful. Because the tax does touch every aspect, right? So you could do a team approach from procurement to order to cash, to master data, to credit collections, to finance to tax, to internal audit, right? So all of these people can have a voice and collectively, um, you know, make the case for either in, um, upgrading a tax engine or implementing one. And I think an another question is the return on investment, your ROI. You know, after the implementation of, you know, your S4 migration and a tax engine, what do you gain? You know, is, the gain more of of automation where you have the potential to either reduce headcount or restructure that headcount where they're now being more proactive or more um, able to do better work instead of just fixing um, past issues or tax accruals, et cetera. That is a key um, return on investment is understanding does this mean we can reduce our headcount or can we have more value add for the current headcount? That is critical. And then how, why don't you kind of go through kind of at a high level, the, the phases of an implementation? Uh, sure. So um, it would follow uh, the normal, what I, I say normal um, SAP project phases of project prep requirements uh, and blueprinting, um, realization, configuration, final prep, and go live and support. So I, I won't go into all those in detail. You probably are already familiar with that, but it would follow along with the overall S4 project. That's I think that's key. It's it, There's an interdependency, which I don't think is too hard to understand between tax and the rest of SAP. Uh, you're not going to be passing any tests if the tax isn't right on the transaction. So it's going to, you can't go live without it. Um, and we can't go live without them. So there's a, there's an interdependence uh, between the two. Um, so it shouldn't be viewed as a standalone um, project. I'm actually uh, working on now that has been uh, underway for months and they finally are getting around to adding tax. So <laughs> despite what we uh, would would like, it, it doesn't always uh, work out uh, the best way, but we, we've got to deal with what we've been presented with. But uh, but again, uh, it shouldn't be viewed as a, as a standalone project. I would just, I would actually view it um, as a component within the system uh maybe a subset of fi but it's, it's that critical to the overall success of the project and meeting the business requirements um perfect so. and as hal mentioned you know testing you know throughout this the process of, of gathering requirements determining what's needed the testing what nuances do you have in your business that require extensive testing? You know, are there um, specific uh, transactions that have always been an issue? Make sure those are part of your test case. You don't want to just test um, the easy transactions, but make sure you, you have a robust testing plan that captures all the, the critical or high stakes um transactions and also the ones that are very unique or troublesome you want to make sure you know from a testing perspective that you cover everything thank you guys all right so five reasons why a tax engine beats the a native erp for tax calculations i know we've we've covered a lot of these um prior with jana and hal but i wanted to reiterate um, some of these. So first, it, it helps to reduce or eliminate monthly tax research. Um, by having a, a tax system, um, it comes with all the rules and rates um, that are 
the company researches for all the jurisdictions, whether it's global or whether it's just domestic uh, US. Um, for example, um, Vertex, you know, it's over 19,000 jurisdictions worldwide. To have a staff to handle all of the research, either on a monthly or, or every few month basis would be huge. So it, it's, it's better to have a tax engine that handles all the research for you. Now, you know, with everything, depending on your line of business, you may have um, specific uh, services or products that you sell that you do need to still research and, and customize in your tax system. But at least the majority of um, your products and services you buy and sell will be um, through a, a third party tax engine. Um, eliminate the monthly tax content updates in every system. As we mentioned, you know, if, if you solution with Vertex, you have kind of a one system that touches everything, touches your purchases, your sales, um, your, your um, cloud environments, your uh, CRM systems. So um, by having a central tax engine, you don't have to update 10 different systems every month. You just update one system and it takes care of it globally. Um, the third point, um, more precise tax calculations on complex scenarios. Um, we've all seen it where people have customized their ERP to solution um, the, the, the tax requirement. Um, with a third party system like Vertex and, and with Accelerator in SAP, um, a lot of the um, workarounds are now automated. You can have an easier solution through drag and drop screens to handle your uh, more complex scenarios. Four, as I mentioned, you know, centralizing the tax across both sales and procurement and kind of extending that um, to global, you know, not just having a system for um, your domestic North America transactions, but having one central tax engine that can handle um, every requirement globally. And the last one, better reporting for audit prep. Um, the good thing about um, Vertex, um, whether it's O-Series or Accelerator that's an SAP, it has robust um, reporting engines that you can use for audit. You can use it for customer disputes or um, tax accrual issues with vendors. The best thing about um, the Vertex suite of products is what they can do to help um, combat audits and help you present your case on why you accrued um, this or why you did not accrue, or from a sales perspective, why you um, did did or did not tax a particular product or service. And on the reporting side, right? So Accelerator has these enhanced reports and they take like 60 tables within SAP regarding master data, um, you know, customer information, vendor information, purchase order information, delivery, invoice, all of these different nuances, accounting, cost centers, tax codes, GL accounts, and puts it on one line of that transaction. So it's really robust. Um, enhanced reporting so you get a complete picture of the entire transaction. Thank you. I'll also make a comment on the reporting uh, for filing. So if uh, you're using a tax engine such as Vertex, uh, you now have the um, possibility of, if you're using an outside provider to do your filings, you, you have the possibility of bringing that in-house. Uh, because you can generate a um, returns export uh, file, and then that would feed uh, a filing solution. Uh, so that's another option you'd have with, with um, the tax engine. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, here, a uh, slide on Vertex by the numbers. Um, we've been in business for over 40 years. Um, we service about 60% of the Fortune 500 um, customers. We're in 195 plus countries, um, over 20,000 um, jurisdictions globally, um, over 800 million uh, tax rules 
um, which I don't think I've ever counted, but that sounds about accurate. Um, we do have a robust team of, of tax researchers um, that help to ensure that for every update that we produce on a monthly basis, that it is accurate, that we are screening all of these 20,000 jurisdictions to make sure we capture all the changes, whether you know legislative statute or whatever, um, we capture those um, in our monthly updates. Like we mentioned, um, Vertex is a powerful end-to-end -end solution. Um, we handle multi-jurisdictions, multi-channel distributions, um, high volume transactions, um, and multiple um, systems. So you don't need um, multiple tax engines because you have 20 different billers. You can use one uh, O-series system to handle um, the computations and tax calculations for all those 20 um, billers. Um, again, as Hal and Jana were mentioning, um, Vertex handles you know, the tax determination from a registration and product mapping standpoint to the compliance and reporting, the, the calculations and the exemptions to the tax data management, whether it's compliance or invoicing, and then your document management. You know the payments and the robust reporting that that Jana was mentioning um, a little bit ago. As you know, Vertex is integrated um, with most of the major um, ecosystems and ERP systems. This is uh, just a few of the ones that Vertex integrates with on a daily basis. And then with, with specifically for SAP, both the ECC side and the S4 side, you know, I mentioned the Vertex Accelerator. Um, that kind of changes all the config from separate um, ABOP coding to bring it all in-house in one system into the Vertex Accelerator, where you can have your tax codes and data mapping um, and your conversions and detailed reporting all in one area um, also it's it uses the sap certified rfc integration um, for the north america us and canada um, we also on a global side um, we have the vertex chain flow accelerator um, and that's uh, sap certified as an add-on that replaces the native tax method um, in sap so again it brings everything into one system uh, it uses the REST API integration with the Vertex Tax Services and O-Series. Also within the SAP landscape, we have numerous uh, plus tools um, that are combined with Accelerator and O-Series. These plus tools um, range from vendor recon that can help um, reconcile your vendor invoices to, to, to determine if you're overpaying or if you need to short pay invoices. There's uh, products for test automation to automate using test suite uh, a, a myriad of, of transactions on a monthly or, or more routine basis. Um, there are other tools to handle tech tax credits. Instead of doing it manually, there are systems out there that'll assist with the tax credits. Um, they're all compatible with the SIC as mentioned above, along with tax services and the web services integration. All of these tools kind of take the, the manual um, technical config from an IT perspective and bring it into more of a, uh, a tax technology system as I use, where um, if, if you're savvy enough from a, a tax perspective, you can configure a lot of these uh, tools and software. Uh, again, um, global indirect tax solution across SAP from um, the commerce cloud on the customer experience side to um, the invoice side with Concur and Ariba, and then on the SAP side as well um, from S4 um, public, private, um, and on-demand systems. Now we'll open it up to our Q&A. 
Um, I have not been reviewing the chats if there are any questions online yet. <laughs> Thanks, panel, for that discussion. Um, just as Karen said, we're going to open the webinar up for Q&A, and we encourage you to submit questions using the chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. So let's move ahead with our first question, and that is, in your experience, what's the most important best practice to follow when implementing a third-party tax engine? Jana? I'm sorry. Um, I think just the implementation of getting involved with the blueprinting, um, to start the basic concept that Hal went over, the blueprinting, realization, uh, configuration, testing, uh, and go live. I think that's the, the components that you need in a successful implementation and involve everyone early, as we talked about. Yeah, and I'll add to that, you know, best practice, making sure you know all your requirements or all your mm -hmm. nuances. Um, you don't want to select a tax engine that handles you know, six out of the 10 requirements, but your your other four requirements, you know, there's no solution there. You need to make sure when you're going through a system selection that you are, that you already have kind of a base of what your requirements are, what you need to look for in a tax engine, or, you know, how many um, transactions you need to process, you know, for, um, for our solution for Vertex, we have a multitude of different solutions depending on the volume. You know, we have an on-premise solution, we have an on-demand solution, and then we have a cloud solution. So depending on your business needs, how many transactions do you process a day? How big are those transactions? You know, you need to make sure you have a scalable solution. That way you're not picking one solution because it fits right now, but in a year from now, when you acquire, you know, three different um, companies that now you need a, a better or, or more robust system. You need to make sure you um, capture all that ahead of time. And I think on the requirements too, is I find the best projects are really detailed in their requirements. So if you know the tax data needed to get it to it, what, how Vertex uses the data or another tax engine, you know, what are the addresses involved, bill to, bill from, ship to, ship from, right? Know that, have that identified, know what your product taxability is and your service and have those requirements really detailed and then that will be the basis for your testing, right? So, um, and then you can really configure to those tests as long as you understand the flows and the data, um, it'll be more successful. I know Robert asked a question about um, migrating from on on premise um, to like a more of a SaaS approach from a tax engine perspective. At Robert, it really depends on kind of what we just mentioned. You know, your transaction volume, um, how sophisticated you are. I think from a just looking at it from on prem versus SaaS. You know, with a on-prem solution, and, and I'll stick with Vertex, you or your IT group has to do the monthly updates. If there's a, a service release or an SR release, your IT group has to handle that. Versus if you move to a more SaaS model, then Vertex owns that. Vertex will handle the monthly updates, the, the service packs, you know, the service releases. So it's, it's less um, effort on your end but there are, you know, um, pros and cons with going to a SaaS model as well. So you, you really need to look at it from does it save you time and money um, from server space, you know, uh, headcount to doing the monthly updates or, or the quarterly releases. Kind of there's multiple different factors to look at. Hopefully that helped. And I know we are running short of time. Eric, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. I was just about to say that, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions today. Thank you, Hal, Kieran, and Jana, for this amazing discussion. And thank you, everyone in the audience, for participating in this fantastic webinar. And enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>